So I mentioned the, the um, dysfunctional arguing about theory and practice and academics and all of that. And what we, what we eventually came up with was a series of three what we're now calling lenses um, for thinking about uh, <coughs> trade-offs. Um, and, um, and we, what we want to, to, to stress in this framework is that each lens does something very well, and it does other things not so well. Each lens focuses you on, you know, on a particular slice of reality, but it also blinds you, if you take it on its own, to other um, aspects of reality. Um, it's also important to stress that none of these three <coughs> map onto particular academic perspectives or fields of practice. Um, valuation process and power of I'll, I'll, I'll go over, over them. Okay? Um, and that's, that's, I think, important. <coughs> Alright, let me talk about valuation. Valuation is all those things like <coughs> ecosystem services. <coughs> um, one of the, for instance, um, and, and this is not my area of expertise, so, um, but, but um, one of the case studies um, in, in one of our workshops was from Peru, an area called Sierra del Divisor. It's an area on the Brazilian border, still relatively uh, intact rainforest. And in fact, there is a very large area of several tens of thousands of hectares for hundreds of thousands of hectares for essentially uncontacted people. And so it's a, it's a real uh, kind of out of the way place. Um, there's also a very large national park. Um, <clears throat> that what's well, not a national park, it's a national. It's it's kind of in a in a, a pre gazette phase. Um, at the same time, <clears throat> it's all been mapped out for timber extraction and um, oil and mining. Uh, you know the maps overlap. They're both government maps from different ministries. Um, <clears throat> now. If you were to do an ecosystem services analysis of that context, so you know what should we do about that place? What I think an analysis would tell you is that it's it's actually probably better to, to cut it all down, because, and I'm being I'm being sort of um, ironic here in saying this. There's what 400 or 600 uncontacted indigenous people, um, and by the way, all the water flows to Brazil. So who cares about Brazil if you're Peruvian? As opposed to the you know 20 million or so, uh, however many million people live in Lima, um, in the coast of Peru, who would benefit from the oil extraction, from the establishment of uh, you know eventually the biofuels and so forth. So I think uh, you know very possibly an ecosystems services analysis would would tend toward um, extraction and, and so forth. So, <clears throat> um, but valuation also addresses those issues of comparability, commensurability. When are things comparable? Um, and when are they not? And of course, you know, we've seen the proliferation of, of multi-criteria, uh, decision-making models that presumably tell you that you can compare apples and oranges, um, that you can put a price on your grandmother's grave uh, and number, um, and so forth. <clears throat> and this is something that's subject to, to debate in the literature and different models, different frameworks have emerged. But the valuation approach deals with all those kinds of questions. The essential issue of comparability, aggregatability, and so forth. Um, <clears throat> and so some of the you know, questions you ask from a valuation perspective, what counts, what is being counted, how, how are values counted at different scales, how are values prioritized, what's not being counted, um, our values in conflict and how our values can be traded off. So that's sort of one body, so one way of thinking about the world. Then there's a process uh, lens, <clears throat> the second lens. And the process lens, the, 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 the previous one, the value lens, is premised on a fundamental faith that things are comparable, potentially at least. Um, or at the very least, that, that, that at least some, some big slices of reality can be aggregated, compared, um, and so forth. And that you can actually you know, measure things and make a decision based on those measurements. So that's an article of faith. The process lens is based on the faith that if you get the right institutions, 
you get the right people at the table. This harks back, of course, to a lot of participatory stuff that a lot of people at C4 pioneered. Um, um, so this in itself is nothing new, but, but I think identifying it in conjunction with these others is, is useful. But it's based on the fundamental faith that, that, that if we do it right, if we just get it right, then we'll be able to make fair, equitable, and sustainable trade-offs. <coughs> and so, questions of who's, you know, who's at the table, you know, what voices are being heard, who's not included, um, scale issues, how are those being managed, what are the institutions, uh, how are the decisions implemented. Um, in, in Vietnam, we had one uh, senior uh, member of the Communist Party um, <coughs> in charge of a new ministry say, oh great, this framework will be great for helping us make decrees. And we're like, wait a minute. Um, um, but uh, who's accountable um, and, and, and how are the poor and vulnerable included? And then finally we have the power lens. And the power lens tells you, wait a minute, that it kind of pulls the fundamental faith out from under you a little bit and says, there are inequities. There are, you know, there are differential capacities in any context. There's um, unequal access to information or the ability to use information. Um, um, obviously, there are explicit forms of power. If a national parks agency comes in with guns and says, all you guys, you're moving out of this protected area, you don't need a subtle analysis of power to understand that. But we make a distinction between <coughs> those explicit forms of power, and they certainly exist in the world, and we've seen them all work, um, but also more implicit forms of power um, that are informed by um, um, a need to understand more intrinsic forms of power um, that, that, that may not be quite so obvious or visible. And we've seen some of this stuff analyzed, um, a number of anthropologists, geographers, and others, have kind of developed some of that work. 